Good day and what's up guys and gals and welcome to Expert Guys Tutorial Services. I'm your teacher for today, Teacher Raf, and we'll be having a discussion on the general sciences. So for a brief introduction, I graduated from high school at LaSalle Green Hills back in 2012. I graduated with a BS biology degree in UP de Limon back in 2017. And currently I'm a third year medical student at St. Luke's Medical Center College of Medicine. And hopefully I'll be graduating by the year 2023. Some of my hobbies include working out or exercising, reading, making coffee, walking my dog, and of course, meme posting on Facebook. So before watching this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and click on the notifications bell to receive the latest videos that Expert Guides has in store for you. And with that, let's begin our lesson proper on earthquakes. So billions of years ago, when the Earth was still very young, multiple processes were taking place. You have your volcanic eruptions, you have your mountain building, you have your lava flowing out in canyons, as you can see in pictures like these. So back then, Earth wasn't completely a habitable place. Earth was literally a ball of molten lava and magma. Multiple processes were shaping up the Earth. You've got your earthquakes, your volcanic eruptions, mountains being formed, rock slides, and various other processes. These processes can be divided into your exogenic or endogenic mechanisms. Earthquakes are an endogenic process because they are involved within the Earth. So what is an earthquake? An earthquake is a geologic series of events that release pent-up energy into the Earth's lithosphere. Another name for earthquake is called rumbling or rumblings. So if you're familiar with this comic strip, please be forewarned as there are spoilers. Okay, so earthquakes are a result of either volcanic activity or from the movement of tectonic plates. Because earthquakes occur before or after a volcanic eruption, it is a good indicator for scientists whether or not a volcano will be erupting soon. Earthquakes again can be caused by the movement of tectonic plates rubbing against each other, moving apart from each other, or moving closer to each other. Now, a fault as a geologic discontinuity on the Earth's surface, it is also indicative that there is active rock movement. You have three kinds of faults you have your normal fault. Reverse fault and strike slip fault. A normal fault is when during an earthquake, the block moves down, and this is a result of your plates being pulled apart. Whereas in a reverse fault, also known as your thrust fault, one of the blocks move upward and is a result of the plates being pushed together. Next, you have your strike slip fault, where in your plates strike against each other, like rubbing your hands, okay? So it moves like that, and they mostly occur in transform plate boundaries. The actions of these faults can produce devastating effects. In 2004, an undersea megathrust earthquake occurred in the Indian Ocean. The magnitude of this earthquake reached a staggering 9.1 to 9.3 on the moment magnitude scale and displaced 30 cubic kilometers worth of water. It triggered devastating tsunamis that radiated outwards along the entire length of 1,600 kilometers of the rupture. The lingering effects of the earthquake were that it saw the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people in Indonesia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, India, Maldives, and many more countries. It also saw the destruction of a lot of property. It's also important to know the different parts of the earthquake. So this picture here shows your epicenter, your focus, and your fault plane. As discussed previously, your fault plane indicates that there is active rock movement. But with the fault plane, it tells you which direction, which direction it will go to. You have your epicenter, which is the surface origin of the earthquake, and you have your focus, which is the origin of the earthquake inside the Earth's interior. Because of the relative position of the epicenter to the focus, your focus is also known as your hypocenter. 
Once an earthquake is triggered, it releases energy in the form of seismic waves. These seismic waves are caused by a number of factors and a number of environmental phenomena. Some of these include volcanic eruptions, large landslides, huge man-made explosions, and of course, your earthquakes. Speaking of large man-made explosions, the largest man-made explosion was a detonation of the thermonuclear hydrogen bomb known as the Tsar Bomba. It was developed by the USSR in an arms race of nuclear weapons versus the United States in what was then known as a Cold War. The bomb weighed over 27 metric tons and was 8 meters by 2.1 meters big. It was released at a height of a staggering 10.5 kilometers and was detonated at a height of 4 kilometers. Upon its detonation, it produced energy worth 50 megatons of TNT. This energy was so great that the resulting shock waves circled the globe three times, leaving glass broken in a nearby village some 780 kilometers from the detonation. And it caused interference to radio communications even hundreds of kilometers from the test site for about 40 minutes. The fireball was huge in size, measuring 8 kilometers from the and visible from even more than 1,000 kilometers from the test site. The resultant mushroom cloud rose to about 67 kilometers, seven times the height of Mount Everest. The results of the explosion was so great that up to this day, it is still recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest, most powerful man-made explosion. So this picture depicts the explosion area of the bomb. The yellow area being the size of the fireball and the red area being the size of the total destruction, or ground zero. As you can see, if this was overimposed or superimposed on the city of Paris, Paris would be completely obliterated. So that's just how powerful that bomb is. As stated earlier, seismic waves are a form of energy released from an earthquake. You have two kinds of seismic waves. You have your surface waves and you have your body waves. From the name itself, surface waves are those waves that travel only along the Earth's exterior or crust. Whereas your body waves, these are waves that can travel in the interior of the Earth. You have two kinds of surface waves, your Rayleigh waves and your love waves. Whereas for your body waves, you have your P waves and your S waves. Now for the first body waves, you would have your P waves. P waves are such because they're known as primary waves and are the first waves detected by seismograph stations across the world. They can pass through solids and liquids and are faster than your S waves. Because of their speed, they can travel as fast as the speed of sound. Their direction of movement is longitudinal, and if you were to imagine how it would move, imagine a slinky as exhibited by this uh, GIF. So that's its movement. Next, you would have your S waves, also known as your secondary waves, because these are the second waves picked up by those stations. Because of their nature, they're slower than your P waves and can only travel through solids. Their matter of direction is via transverse or oscillating movements. All right. Now for your surface waves, you go with our Rayleigh waves. Now the Rayleigh waves are distinguished because of their movement such as this one. This is described as a rolling longitudinal and transverse motion, which, which you can see like waves in an ocean wave. And lastly, we have your love waves. So the movement of your love waves causes a horizontal shifting of the earth. It should be important to note that these are faster than your Rayleigh waves. So this is how it moves. All right. The 1990 Luzon earthquake was the most devastating earthquake in Philippine history. On the moment magnitude scale, it registered a phenomenal 7.8. The earthquake was a product of a strike-slip movement along the Philippine Fault and the Dig Dig Fault within the Philippine Fault system with the epicenter at the town of Rizal in Nueva Ecija. 
The earthquake was largely felt throughout Metro Manila. Nearby cities such as Baguio City, Cabanatuan City, and Dagupan City were heavily affected because of their proximate distance. Due to the unique location of Baguio City as a plateau, aid was severely hindered. For two days, the city was without aid. The Hyatt Terrace's Baguio Hotel was brought low, bringing with it at least 80 hotel employees and guests. 28 other buildings, such as the Baguio Hilltop Hotel, were also destroyed, including hotels, fa hotels, factories, and government and university buildings. So this is just a short video showing you the generation of a tsunami after an earthquake was produced. This was back then in 2011 when an earthquake was triggered off the coastline of Japan. So this is just an infographic on what you should do before and after and during an earthquake. You have to remember that you have to find a protective surface such as a table and do your job cover and hold. After the stabilization of an earthquake, you have to find an open field where there is relatively less um, man-made structures, okay? The important thing to note that the, most of the damage of an earthquake is because of the building surrounding where you are and not because of the earthquake itself. And that concludes our discussion of earthquakes for today's general science. So before we end our discussion on earthquakes, let's just add, go over some sample questions which I'm sure will be good in helping you review for your entrance exams. So number one, the hypocenter is also known as the epicenter, focus, fault plane, or tectonic plate. The answer for this question is letter B, focus. So again, from the picture, the focus is the interior origin of your earthquake and is also known as the hypocenter. Next question, this is true of surface waves. A, they are slower than body waves. B, they travel in the Earth's interior. C, a P wave is a surface wave. And D, a love wave is a surface wave. The answer is letter D, a love wave is a surface wave. If you can recall, you have two kinds of waves, your body waves and your surface waves. Your body waves will be your P waves and S waves while your, uh, while your surface waves are your love waves and relay waves. Next item, last. An earthquake in a sea or an ocean will produce this phenomenon. A, a tsunami, B, a high tide, C, a low tide, or D, a flash flood. The correct answer is letter A. So a tsunami is a phenomenon where in um, uh, large waves are produced because of displacement due to an earthquake, okay? So thank you, and I hope you've learned a lot during your watching of this video. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel so you would receive the latest updates on what lessons that Expert Guides has in store for you. If you've not done so, you can contact the following contact numbers below or visit our Facebook page to find out what Expert Guide is all about and to see if um, you're interested in enrolling in its programs. So stay tuned, God bless, and I hope you've learned a lot today.